TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Turkey warns Israel that expanding building in illegal settlements could harm the recently revived relations between the two countries. Israeli National Security Minister Itamal ben Gvir dismisses Western rebuke over Israel's construction in Judea and Samaria, proclaiming the land belongs to the people of Israel. Chinese President Xi Jinping, following a meeting with his Iranian counterpart Ibrahim Raisi, calls upon the West to reinvigorate the 2015 nuclear agreement. Israel will continue to stand by Turkey in the face of overwhelming loss and devastation. Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen concluded a one-day visit to Turkey last night, prior to which he toured the Israeli field hospital, which the IDF Home Front Command erected in Turkey's quake-stricken region and held separate meetings with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his counterpart Mevlut Cavusoglu. During his meeting with President Erdogan, the Turkish leader once again proposed that Israel export natural gas to Europe via Turkish territory, to which Jerusalem's top diplomat responded that the matter would once again be reviewed. Meanwhile, following a meeting with Turkish Foreign Minister Cevushoglu, Minister Cohen highlighted that he relayed to his counterpart Israel's preparedness to deepen its humanitarian assistance to Turkey in the face of the devastation which claimed the lives of over 31,000 people and wounded over 100,000 more. Israel was among the first nation to send rescue team to Turkey with more than 450 professionals who arrived immediately after the earthquake. After the earthquake, within the first 24 hours in order to save life. We have brought hundreds of tons of medical equipment and humanitarian aid and built a field hospital which I will visit today to attend those who need medical treatment. In the face in the face of such overwhelming loss and devastation, it is more important than ever for us, the international community in general, and Israel in particular, to come together as friends, to offer support and assistance in any possible way. Humanian sympathy should have no borders, no political boundaries. We stand in solidarity with the Turkish people during these difficult times. And we will do all we can, all we can to provide aid and comfort to those in need, not only but in the future as well, as we understand that the challenges is enormous. After thanking Israel for the humanitarian aid it provided to the Turkish people, Foreign Minister Cevushoglu also seized the opportunity to address the Security Cabinet decision in Jerusalem to legalize nine settlement outposts in the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria. Ankara's top diplomat stressed, quote, Expanding building in illegal settlements could harm our relationship. We are coming up to the month of Ramadan and are hoping for calm and a preservation of the status quo at the Haram al-Sharif at al-Aqsa, the Arabic name for the Temple Mount and the mosque situated on its grounds. Meanwhile, in response to a joint statement by the four ministers of France, Germany, Italy, the United Kingdom and the United States, in which they asserted that they strongly oppose and are deeply troubled by the Israeli government's announcement that it is advancing nearly 10,000 settlement units, and intends to begin a process to normalize nine outposts that were previously deemed illegal under Israeli law, Israeli National Security Minister Itamar Ben Gvir published a scathing video in which he dismissed a joint statement by Israel's most powerful Western allies. <laughs> 
In contrast to the proclaimed position by a large section of Jerusalem's incumbent government coalition, as part of which all of the land of Israel, including the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria, and the Jordan Valley, are resolutely regarded within the historic prism of biblical truth, the U.S. under the Biden administration, alongside many of its Western allies, deem these territories as Palestinian, a position that is founded upon consecutive U.N. resolutions. Therefore, any construction of Israeli settlements in the disputed territories are viewed by them as an obstacle to the internationally aspired two-state solution, which is regarded by the majority of foreign powers as the most viable solution to the decades-old Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, we are opposed to unilateral measures that have the potential to exacerbate tensions and uh, that can move us further away from a negotiated two-state solutions. We are opposed to any unilateral measures that, put simply, can be an obstacle to peace. Uh, there is no question uh, in the minds of our Israeli interlocutors, I would imagine, about where America stands. Uh, we made that very clear in our statements yesterday. You probably saw the multilateral statement uh, that we released today with uh, some of our European allies as well. Price continued by responding to a question on calls by Chinese President Xi Jinping during a state visit to Beijing by his Iranian counterpart, Ibrahim Raisi, for the early and proper resolution of Iran's nuclear issue, all the while expressing China's support for the Islamic Republic and safeguarding its perceived rights and interests. Well, a, a broader point on this. Um, I spoke yesterday to this, but uh, we've consistently made the point that we've engaged with the PRC and other global stakeholders on uh, to encourage, in this case, the PRC to take steps to counter uh, Iran's policies that destabilize the region and threaten our partners uh, and our allies. Iran's nuclear program, its ballistic missile program, its other malign activities and influence are profoundly uh, destabilizing in the region. Uh, that is of concern not only to us, it should also be of concern to the PRC. Presumably, that's why the PRC came together with us uh, the better part of a decade ago uh, by now in the original configuration of the P5 plus one uh, to work with us to ultimately negotiate what became known as the Joint Comprehensive uh, Plan of Action. It is worth noting that China, which vigorously refuses to adhere to U.S. sanctions against the Islamic Republic, is Iran's biggest trade partner. Consequently, after repeatedly breaching U.S. sanctions, a number of China's mega corporations have faced punitive measures by Washington, actions which Beijing has actively been trying to reverse and which would be rescinded once the faltering nuclear deal with Iran, or JCPOA, would potentially be revived. Regardless, during the meeting between Presidents Xi and Raisi in Beijing, China stressed its willingness to deepen cooperation with Iran in trade, agriculture, industry and infrastructure. Meanwhile, at a time when the Islamic Republic continues to blatantly disregard its commitments under the Non-Proliferation Treaty, it continues to work with its own partners, including China, Russia, the EU institution and Qatar, in efforts to revive the so-called Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, despite its persistent refusal to cooperate with the IAEA, on open investigations related to nuclear particles that were uncovered in undeclared location throughout Iran. While the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, repeatedly dismisses Iranian responses to questions on the matter as technically not credible, the Ayatollah regime, which continues to insist that the nuclear particles that were found in its territory constitute a Western conspiracy led by Israel, demands that the IAEA Board of Governors must make a political decision to prevent the agency's probes as a prerequisite for the JCPOA's revival. Nevertheless, in contrast to a similar political decision that was taken in relation to IAEA investigations into Iran's nuclear weapons program, which was taken prior to the adoption of UN Security Council Resolution 2231, which essentially endorsed the JCPOA, the United States, France, Britain and Germany have now refused Iran's recurrent demand. Moreover, with Iran's military assistance to Russia in its war against Ukraine 
and the Ayatollah regime's brutality against Iranian citizens, the United States remains vocal about its refusal to succumb to the Islamic Republic's nuclear extortion. Again, the JCPOA has not been on the agenda for some time. Uh, we continue uh, to uh, discount, if not dismiss, repeated claims uh, from Iranian officials uh, that, uh, you know, we are uh, eager to go back to the JCPOA. We're calling for uh, a return to JCPOA negotiations. Uh, we're not. Uh, we're sending very clear messages uh, to the Iranian regime. Those messages are stop killing your own people, stop sending UAV technology to Russia, and free those wrongfully detained American citizens. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. We would like to continue encouraging you. Pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Mebulach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.